Hey everyone, now that I have all 15 of these batteries removed from the module, I'm ready to start figuring out how to wire the balance leads for my BMS. By the end of this video, you will have three different methods of finding the wires you need for your balance leads. I will be doing a 48 volt setup with these, so two of them will be wired in series for my application, but the logic is the same regardless of the number of batteries in series. Looking at the outside of this battery, there are a few things to mention. The first is the giant positive and negative symbols on top. It's a great reference, and you can see that the six screws holding this on are unevenly spaced, so you can't put this on backwards because these, these bolt holes won't line up. The second thing to mention is this sticker here in the front. It's got some basic information about this battery. So the rated capacity is 58.8 amp hours. The rated energy is 1.36 kilowatt hours. The rated voltage is 23.1 volts uh, nominal. The approximate battery weight is 27.13 pounds or 12.31 kilograms, and it was assembled in the USA. Some of these batteries have this BMS module on the negative side like this one, and others have this module on the positive side. I will be double checking that the wiring is not different between them and will share whatever my findings are later in this video. The last thing to note is that although these symbols are on top of the battery, both of these terminals are not live. You can see that this right one has this tab that wraps around the top and the left one doesn't. So the left terminal is actually a dummy terminal. It is only live if you use one of these bus bars. So some of these batteries had this on here, some of them didn't. So you can go through and find these and use them if you need to. But as it stands, this is live, this is not. So you need something to connect them. Now that we've gone over the outside of the battery, we can remove these six screws and the four screws holding on this BMS cover with a T15 Torx bit. So let's do that now. All right, so this is all now free and clear. Uh, there's quite a bit going on in here. So let's see if we can figure out what all this is. So this wasn't what I was expecting. I thought for sure there would be seven prismatic cells in series, but this is 21 pouch cells wired in a 3P, 7, well, 7S3P configuration. So this is the main negative, and there's three pouch cells welded here on the tab, and then this is the positive side of those cells, and then those are wired in series to the negative of the next three for the, the second cell, cell in series. So that's the positive of the second, this is the negative of the third, and then the positive of the third, negative of the fourth, and so on, all the way to the main positive of this battery. So this is pretty incredible. These are all actually individually labeled. So if you zoom in here, uh, this is our, our S0, I guess you would say. This would be S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6, and S7 uh, up here. Um, they labeled all of these already. So you can see S4 right here. Um, down over here, there's an S3, so these are already labeled individually, so all of these wires have their own identification. That's pretty cool, that makes stuff a little bit easier, I mean you can always just physically look, but the fact that they put that in there as a confirmation is pretty awesome. Now we're ready to start finding our balance lead wires, so I left this connected because the holes for the pins on this connector are very small, my multimeter won't fit in there, so we're going to use the these two rows of pins to find the wires that we need to use. So the way this works is this front row of wires closest to the outside of the battery is the top row, and then the inner row is this bottom row. The next thing to do is check for continuity from the main negative to these pins, because that's gonna give us our main negative for the BMS. So we'll go through, start touching these pins and see when we get a beep. So we got a beep on the third one from the left, fourth one from the left, and fifth one from the left. And none of these other ones are beeping. We're actually, this battery is kind of different because they have thermocouples up here. These, these blue wires are thermocouples for temperature monitoring. The third one from the left is actually electrically connected by that, not an actual balance lead wire. So this battery is a little bit tricky as far as that goes. But the fourth one and fifth one from the left are actually spliced together here and these do run up to this connector at the top for the balance lead connection. 
So when you go through and wire yours up, you can use the fourth or the fifth from the left, either one of these two wires that are spliced together for your main BMS negative. Now that we know which pins are our main negative, we can go through and start looking for voltage on all of these other pins, because when we find 3.3 volts from our main negative to a pin, we know that that's gonna be our first positive, and then six is gonna be our second positive, and so on. So I'm gonna start in the bottom row. No voltage on any of these. All right, so on this pin I have 3.32 volts. So four, the fourth pin from the left is our number one positive. And moving to the right, this is six, so that's number two positive. Nine, that's gonna be number three positive. Here's four positive. All right, so you get the idea how to use voltages on these pins to find all of your balance leads. I just wanted to give you an example with a few of these. Uh, and just show the logic behind it, not necessarily step-by-step -step how to do this, because this is going to apply to any battery that you ever try to find the balance leads for. If it has a built-in BMS or if there's any kind of wiring that connects to bus bars up here, you can, you can do this this way. So using the voltages on these pins is handy when you don't have easy access to the actual bus bar. So like in my BYD batteries, it was a pain to try and touch a pin and reach all the way around that big module and make contact with one of those bus bars. But in this case, we do have very easy access to the bus bars up top. Okay, so I went through and pulled all of these small blue wires out of here, and it is the four wires all the way to the left on this connector. Let me try and zoom in on this. So you have a blue, a green, there is one black wire all the way to the left. It doesn't have any markings on it or anything, it's just by itself. And then the orange one, so I'm going to cut these off and move on. Alright, so the second method is nice because you don't need any equipment whatsoever to find your balance leads. So all you will do is find each of these connection points, like this here. So this is going to be our main negative for our balance connections. And you can just go through and, and trace this wiring by hand and figure out which wires are connected to, to what. So this wire right here is our main negative. And then hopping over here, you can see that this is going to be our first cell positive, and it's this wire right here. So that's pretty simple. You can just cut this, and it makes everything a lot easier. You don't need to use a multimeter or anything like that. So I really like the manual tracing for this battery just because everything's wide open, and it's super easy to get to. I know I promised three methods, so here's your third method. Uh, you can just copy this and just use this layout for this connector. So uh, two, your two one negatives are here. So this is the top of the pins or the closer side of the, this wiring. So it's kind of kind of looking up up at the connector like this. So it might be a little bit confusing, but it's basically flip-flopped. So I probably should have flipped that around, but we've come too far now. So these two connections, let me zoom in on this real quick. This is our one negative, one negative, which are these two which are spliced together, and this is the closer side to us. And then the next one over is five, which is this purple wire, six, which is this black wire, and then these two on the right are seven and seven, and that seemed odd to me, but if you look further down, you'll see a splice point right here where both of these wires run down together, and you can follow those right down back to that connector. So those are both number seven. And then in the back, uh, the back row is going to be one positive behind this leftmost wire, and then it's going to be two positive behind this wire, behind this purple wire right here is going to be three, and then all three of these on the far right are four positive. Actually, now that I look at it, there's a four positive behind this black wire, and the other two are open, so there are no wires going in there. So there's only one wire in the back, for your four positive and it's going to be this one. I hope that made sense. If it didn't, just let me know. So there's your third method. It's a cheat sheet more or less. I, I did something similar for the BYD batteries. I didn't have anybody complain, but I also don't know if anybody followed it. So if you guys find an issue with the wiring that I've specified for this, let me know for sure because I do not want to put out bad information. 
Now I have one of these batteries which has the BMS module on the positive side. So I'm gonna pull this apart and make sure that the wiring connector for this is the same as this. All right, I got the covers off. Let's get in here and check this out. All right, so it does look like the connectors are exactly the same, which makes sense because I would think that they wouldn't want to make two separate types of BMSs just because of where they put this. It makes a lot more sense to just run the wiring the opposite direction. If you look here, this would be our S0 or our main negative. We have a wire that comes off here. It splices right here. And then you can kind of follow these, trace these with your fingers. They tuck behind these wires and come out right here. Our two, uh, one negatives from this. And then as a secondary double check, uh, this would be our seven positive. And this comes off right here, comes down, splices and splits, and comes down in these two right connectors. And then number six, should be the next one over. And if you follow this up, it comes to here. And the next one over should be number five, this purple one. And I traced that and followed it to right here, which is correct. So this is identical for this wiring. So it does not matter whether the BMS module is on the positive or negative side. This is the wiring schematic for this. Schematic the right word? That sounds too fancy for this. Eh, whatever. One more thing before I forget. I said that this was the main negative and this was a dummy terminal. The same thing applies for all of the positive terminals. So this is your, your main positive and this bus bar was on here and you can see that there's nothing here wrapping around connecting to anything up top. So this terminal's dead, but alive right now, alive, live, whatever. It's live right now based on this bus bar running back here. All right, everyone, I hope this video was helpful and informational. And if you have any questions and, or if I didn't address anything, please let me know. I don't think I said high quality in this video, but these BMSs have a really high quality conformal coating on them. You can tell it's falling off apparently. Okay, I take that back. I wanna give a big shout out to Battery Hookup for throwing my teardown video for these batteries on their homepage of their website. That's awesome, I so appreciate it. It's just incredible. We are starting to receive some other goodies. This is a 1000 amp continuous bus bar from Dell City supplier, electrical supplier. Uh, for whatever reason, these are normally listed at like over $200 a piece and they are on sale right now for $56. So it was well worth it. This one has 12 uh, 5 16 studs and then there are also number eight and number 10 screws over here for other smaller appliances. Um, we also have some uh, terminal block fuses and stuff like that. And we also have some other fuse types coming in. Lots of wiring, some uh, one gauge and three aught wiring. So things are gonna get exciting really fast. But for now, that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you on the next one.